Spooky Interviews from Spooky Ventures. This edition, Judy Vamshire. You certainly have your hands in a number of various spooky ventures. I'd like to touch on a few of them here to start things off. First, spooky music is always a cool thing. What can you tell us about your music endeavors? Well, I decided to use my spooky music as a window. A big window into my life of the dark side of black magic vampires witches demons devils and all naughty things to come and i wanted all my disciples and my new followers to be trapped and enhanced by me because I have lots of things for them that they desire. And what is it? My spooky music that captivates them. also do the horror host thing. There is really quite a tradition in that field. What do you bring to it that is fresh and how do you see yourself continuing and expanding on that tradition? Well, I know it's quite a tradition, but I've got more than tradition and traditions in advance for you. I'm a real vampire that brings my black magic satanic evil ways and devilish naughty things so that's a little bit more than just a tradition and then the sweet smell from me is more than just fresh i've been smelt more than once or twice by a few people i'm sure you can smell me now and then to expand on everything I'm doing in my traditional ways, everything, everything just gets bigger and bigger, like me and my music and my hosting and the world around me. Please take a look and see. Hello, you know, you know, you know, I've been to Salem's Academy for girls. I really didn't get up to much, only having plenty of orgies, as you do, you do, you do, sacrificing lamb, sheep, pigs, moose, beavers, and crabs. Oh, crabs, they were a sight for sore eyes. They took a little bit longer to get rid of. Bastards! Are there horror hosts you consider to be influences? No, just me. Because when I look in the mirror, I see my reflection of me. And when I grow up, I'm going to look even more scary than myself. And the scarier I get, the more influential I will be. 
But on a serious note, Elvira does it for me. You also do a spooky kitchen segment. Where did the idea come from for that, and what else can you tell our viewers about it? The idea came from, I'm such a bad cook that I thought I could improve my skills. So I stole Grandpa and Grandma Vampire's cooking book and I made some diabolical food. And that's where it started, the Vampire's Kitchen. You have to get into it, really deep. also made some diabolical cocktails to kill my lovers off. A few more animals to give it flavour. <coughs> they got really thin, slim fast. Well, it's better than getting it up the arse. And this is where it all started. And they loved it. And the more diabolical it got, the better it got. Next, please. Have I missed any of your spooky endeavors? Yes. I like scaring people late at night in the British graveyard when the locals come out drunk. Oh, I have so much fun. <laughs> and then, what happens next? I go into the next village. I'm not going to tell you. It's a secret. What are you working on at the moment? I'm working on a new program called Legends and Mysteries about haunted castles and haunted places to keep you frightened and also in the process of making some music horror videos to keep you in suspense but most of all I'm working on improving my sex life all my lovers keep dying on me I wonder why could it be they're frightened of me or I'm exciting them too much. I don't know, but I'm still working on that. And the more I work, the harder I'm working. So that's what I'm working on. Do you remember when you first became fascinated with the horror genre or spooky things in general? Yes, vividly. I was born on Halloween and I came out of a dark hole. And who delivered me? Midwife Matisha Adams and Dr. Uncle Fester. Oh, and that was the beginning of my fascination with the spooky side. And as I grew up, my father, who was a grave digger, I used to help at the weekends. But little did I know as well, at night, he was a grave robber. So that was my fascination of the spooky side. Do you have a favorite medium, be that print or film or other for horror? I like horror stories, hand written in blood, on dried stretched skin of a victim. Next please. Who are some of your favorite horror creators? The first one is John Carpenter, Vampires. Of course, I love sucking blood. He was just brilliant, he was. Second one is Wes Craven, Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy had really sharp nails, sharper than mine. I'm very jealous of Freddy. I don't know how he did it. I've got a lot catching up to do. And the third one was the Exorcist 
William Peter Blatley, Blatty, Blatley, whatever you want to call. I like the way she vomited. I vomit sometimes, it turns people on. And another one I like. <gasps> Who? Let me think. <gasps> My mind's gone blank. Who is it? Give me a clue. Oh, Hammer House of Horror Productions. I love all the Dracula films they made. I've even been there. I've slept there in the Gothic mansion. I loved it. Was it haunted? Not for me, because I'm already dead. But for the other people, they were terrified. There's been curses. People have committed suicide there on the River Thames where the bank is. But it was wonderful to see again. Anyway, there you go. Next question. What are some of your favorite horror books? Well, my favorite books are To the Devil and Daughter, The Devil Rides Out by Dennis Wheatley. Plenty of black magic I love, and satanic, and all that nakedness, as naked as you can be. And the Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. All oh, those pets when they're dead and they come back alive. They're so friendly. You could train them. Woof, woof. I don't think that would help. They're more than barking mad, they're barking dead, just like me. And if you like a little bit of blood, my other book, and the Eva book, and the Iva book, is Bram Stoke, Dracula. If you want to call it Bram Stoker, Stokes, or Stark, Naked Mad, well then that's all of us. But then again, there's plenty more favourite books. I could go all night long, couldn't you? What about your favourite horror movies? My favourite horror movies are Dracula Untold because he's hot and bloody evil, just like me, and I love to drink plenty of blood. Also, Carry from 1976. I like the old version. I love the way she electrocutes the people and sets them on fire. Oh, they're smoking hot, just like me. And the last one is a spoof horror comedy. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Oh, she has big nipples, just like me. Don't you agree? Next question. We can't live by spooky alone. What other things captivate your interests? Dogs and sex. Look, I'm starring in this movie. What have you got to say for yourself? I know, but please, can't you wait till later? I'm the diva around here, not you. Yes, you're diva, diva, diva. But I'm the devil, devil, devil's daughter. Remember that. I know you're Vaglina. Oh, no, you don't. You must be joking, because I wasn't here first. And you weren't here first. I know. You wait till I speak to your father later. He won't let you come back. Now, what would you like of me now? Director. More sex. Yes! Have you created works in other areas beyond horror spooky territory? Yes. Traveling the world and collecting antiques and treasures, a little bit like Tomb Raider or Tomb Stealer. 
I visited New Orleans antique store and came across a shifty old man called Toothless Tommy. I thought he was friendly, but he wouldn't put a stake in my heart. So I had to trade with him for him not to kill me. I gave him Grandpa Vampire's teeth in return. He gave me some old bats. I like old bats. I've got lots of bats at home and some old ones. Have you got some old bats? So that's my other time I spent than being spooky. I wasn't that spooky. I was nearly dead. If you could sit down to dinner with any three people, living or dead, with whom would you be dining and what would be on the menu? If I could sit down for dinner, who would they be? The first one would be Alistair Crowley, Mother Teresa, and the third one would have to not be one person, but a band. I would love Led Zeppelin. That would make for interesting conversation between evil and good. And we could talk first before we had a meal. It would be Alistair Crowley saying to Mother Teresa, do what thou wilt. And Mother Teresa would look at him and smile and pray and say, I've got a whole lot of love. Why Led Zeppelin would take the stairway to heaven. And what would we have on the menu for appetizers? Crunchy bat wings, goblin soup, or to gag on, and then some hole in the toad, a vegetarian dish for mains, deadly nightshade, and some crunchy barking tree. Some meaty mains would be steak in the heart and some liver and also Grandpa's chicken graveyard pie. For drinks, it'd be blood, followed by more blood. And that's what we would have. What else would you like the viewers to know about that we haven't touched on in this interview? Well, between now and Christmas, I'll be working on some new music videos to keep you occupied and also some more cooking shows to cook up a storm in the vampire's kitchen. And while that's doing and doing and doing and done, I'm flying over to Transylvania to see my family and also Grandpa and Grandma Vampire to steal some of their cooking recipes for my cooking show. I may also drop in on the lad in his steakhouse. Thank you for the interview. Now it's time to go. I cannot guarantee you a safe passage any longer. I'll give you 20 seconds. Goodbye. Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.